Okay, so don't so just ignore Facebook uh, Facebook Live because that's going to just get distracting. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to adjust it though. So for everybody out there who's watching, all those people. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> did you already introduce me? Tamara, did you introduce me already? She did. Yes. She did? I yeah, I told them how wonderful you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. thank you. All right. Sounds great. Okay, so. All right, you guys. How many are you there? One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> There's about nine of us. Okay, yeah, cool. Ten. Oh, ten. I didn't count me. <laughs> ten plus all the people on Facebook Live. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about GSOW. Can you hear me good? Because it sounds like there's an echo. Oh. Oh, delay there. And we can't hear you at all now. Okay, well, I didn't say anything. How about now? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Are we going to get the echo? It's probably because I have a speaker up. Okay, so are we all right? I'll try and move it away from you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, this is my first lecture talking to the Canadian, any of the Canadian groups. I hope to be able to, let me take this off so you can see me talking. Uh, oh, darn it. I don't take too much work to try to figure that out. Skype. Okay, I'm back again. Can you see me? I can see you up in the top. I'm in a tiny little window. Yeah. No, we can see us. <laughs> Stop sharing. Here, I'll do it like this. Here, now we can see oh, you. you guys. Okay. So this is my first lecture to be speaking to you guys. Um, I'm hoping to do a tour of everything. I'm hoping to do a tour of Canada sometime, but at the moment, we're going to go with this. So um, I am Susan Gerbic, and I do run the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project, as Tamara hopefully has told you. And I'm going to talk, talk a little bit about a couple different things that um, we, we are doing. So Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia, how many people there have heard of that? Do you know what that is? One, a half of one. <laughs> Okay, so, and Tamara obviously knows what it is. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to change Wikipedia. We're trying to change it concerning all the topics of science, scientific skepticism, and the paranormal. So those three topics are really what we're focusing on. And um, what we do is we're different from most Wikipedia groups in that we operate completely on uh, Facebook, and we are inside a secret cabal of Facebook. And so what we are, we're there and we're very social and we're able to interact with each other. And it's different than how a normal editor would, 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 would edit, which would be completely on Wikipedia only. And we're trying to work off of um, uh, Facebook as well as um Wikipedia. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to really change those Wikipedia pages to reflect good science and good skepticism. And we follow all the rules of Wikipedia. So there's no um, nefarious kind of things going on, even though our, our name does sound like we're pretty kind of, you know, sketchy being gorilla skeptics and all. So um, we another reason why we're really completely different from almost every Wikipedia editing type of group or any other kind of project that's going on out there is that we are operating in multiple languages. And I know that in Canada, not where you guys are, but in, um, in Montreal, there's a lot of French speaking Canadians. Is that right? 
apparently it's a big deal and uh, we want to make sure that we get Wikipedia pages written in all languages possible. And I have people who edit for us in multiple languages. I have one, I have, I have many Canadian editors right now, but I don't really have any that are super active except for I have one and I'll mention him a few times. He's in, he's in Montreal. His name is Robin, um, can't, 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 C-A-N-T-I-N. How are we? Yeah. I don't want to go and look on my screen and, and see how I know how it's spelled because I'll just touch a button or something and everything will go wee weird. And <laughs> I don't want to do anything like that. Um, the other reason why we're completely different from most projects is that because we are um, not only just having people edit Wikipedia, but we train from the very beginning. People who have never touched Wikipedia before are able to learn how to edit Wikipedia following uh, self-paced directions. We have training training uh, videos and training manuals and ass assignments. Plus, you're also assigned a, a, a personal trainer. And um, being in the secret cabal, you're able to uh, interact with your peers. And those peers are all over the United States. Actually, they're all over the world. And I think we're at 123 people. We just had one more person join. In fact, that person is in Montreal. So um, that's kind of an interesting spot that we don't have a lot of Canadians. We are our, our most popular um, nationality is um, besides American is the um, Australians. They're really, really uh, aggressive about uh, activism. So we're really an activism force. So now let me go over here to the screen share because what I want to do is I want to tell you a few stories. And this story that, okay, so I normally start with most of my, okay, let me go over to screen share again. Ah, 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 I can, I can, I got this. I got this, you guys. Bear with me. I'm sorry. This is new for me. But um, screen share, tell it I want to screen share. And... And then I hit start. Okay. So one of the things that I do, can you guys see that? It should be a picture of people screaming. It's just loading. Took a second last time. Okay. Is it there? Yeah. But it's yeah, coming it. up. It's pixely, but it's okay. coming. So that is a picture that I took at Monterey. There we go. Okay. Monterey County Skeptics, which is the local group that I, I run. This is a... Um, from March for Science, not this last year, but the year before, from the very first one we did. And I don't know, did you guys do March for Science in your area? Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. So it was a it was a worldwide phenomenon. I think we had several hundred thousand people who participated. But this is the photograph I took for my local group. And I think it sums up the March for Science in Monterey County um, because it shows women and children having a voice in a way that they hadn't before. You guys are hearing me okay? It just sounds back kind of weird. Yeah. No, we're okay. Okay. All right, cool. Somebody just, somebody over there in the back there put a thumbs up or a thumbs down if everything's not going great because I can see you guys a little bit. Um, so one of the problems with the March for Science, I mean, it was really inspiring and everything. We, we, we had a great time, right? We went out and we spoke for the woodpeckers and we marched for science and we wore our pink hats and so on. But the problem was, is nothing really happened after the fact. I mean, we weren't able to really solve problems and, and, and science didn't get a do over, you know, we didn't, we didn't really end up doing anything with it. It was just a, a feel good moment for us to go out and talk and and protest and be one with other scientists and things, but it didn't really go anywhere. So the, the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project is one of those things that you can do that will actually um, support science because of the different kinds of things that, that uh, our project does. So now here's a, just a quick little thing that shows you what Wikipedia has multiple languages. We're in English, Spanish, Dutch, Italian, Portuguese, all these different languages are on, on Wikipedia. And it's really important in our view that we get Wikipedia pages written so that the world can understand it. Not, it shouldn't be where everybody has to translate a page. We really need to get the Wikipedia page written in such a way that not only is it readable, 
but that it's understandable and, and enjoyable and in the language that a person wants to read it. Okay, so far so good? So I'm going to tell you a couple mm -hmm. stories. Now, the first story I want to tell you, um, I have picked for you guys specifically. Um, Karen and, and Tamara said that you'll know who this next person is. And I've picked it because it is sort of local for you. Do you guys know who that is? <laughs> Besides Tamara we had and Karen. some medieval painting up first. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Who's that? Nate. You guys know who he is? Okay, you guys look so energetic over there. <laughs> okay, so Nathan Phelps is the son of Fred Phelps, who is the founder and leader, or was the founder and leader of Westboro Baptist Church, which is an extremely fundamentalist church that operated in Kansas in, in, in uh, America, uh, South, uh, the USA. I guess I'm supposed to call this the USA, right? So um, what happened is that he was completely estranged from his family. He left on the stroke of midnight on his 18th birthday and walked out of the house and had almost no contact with any of the of uh, his family members after that fact. So he's, oh my gosh, the stories, you, you got to listen to his stories. So one of the parts of training to be a GSOW editor is, is that you have to rewrite a Wikipedia page. We give you a lot of different lessons, but we also want you to rewrite a Wikipedia page. And um, you take all the lessons as you've learned, and then you pick a page off of a, a list I have of, of things that need to be done. It's not like we throw you in and tell you to do that on the first day or anything. This is a process. You start off learning little tiny things and it work, you work your way up. So there was a Wikipedia page for Nathan Phelps. And this is what it looked like when we first saw it back in 2012. And you can see it has six citations. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has six citations. It's uh, pretty, pretty bland. Uh, we call it a non-scroller because that is it. You don't have to scroll to see the entire screen. So this was in pretty sad shape. So he wasn't representing. This Wikipedia page did not represent Nathan Phelps well. It didn't represent our community well because Nathan Phelps speaks for our community. He's an activist in um, Canada. I believe he used to run the Calgary... Um, Center for Inquiry, is that right? Years ago, yeah. Okay, so he's also somebody that the spokes, that people in the media would want to go to to get information about Westboro Baptist because, you know, he's sane and um, and so on. So this is the page what it used to look like. I mean, you know, if you're going to call somebody up, you want to call somebody sane, right? So this is the next version. So I, I spent a little time on it and the page existed like this for a couple of years. And you can see that now there's a photo and uh, we added another citation. So it's up to seven citations. So this was better than what was out there, but it really wasn't a very great Wikipedia page. I mean, some people would call this a good Wikipedia page uh, compared to other ones, but this pretty, pretty not, not great. So what happened is one of my editors, his name was Chris, he selected the Nathan Phelps Wikipedia page to rewrite as his final project to be a uh, finish his training in GSOW. And Nathan Phelps and I were going to be speaking together at QED in England. So that's kind of why I wanted his page rewritten, because I wanted it to be in great shape for this conference so I could show it to him when I met him for the first time in uh, England in 2014. So Chris was just brand new and he was going through and he was improving the Wikipedia page and then he's posting on the secret cabal and we're all giving him feedback and we're saying oh you know do this do that improve this improve that but what happened is is that one night the Wikipedia page was almost done and I was, I was looking at my Facebook feed, you know, as you do when you're getting ready to go to bed. And I saw a post from Nathan Phelps. And Nathan Phelps posted that his father, Fred, was in hospice. He just got word for it. This is back in 2013, I believe. 
or was it 14? Anyway, we'll know in a minute. I'm going to show you a slide. So um, I thought, oh my God, his father's in hospice. That means the media is going to go crazy because once something hits the media, obviously they need to know who to contact. Everybody wants to know, you know, who Fred Phelps. Wait a second. What happened with him and who's that? So we got a hold of the guy who was working on the Wikipedia page and he was taking his time doing it right. We said, make it live. I don't care what it looks like. Anything you've done is better than what's out there right now. So um, Chris went and he made it live. And this is what it looks like today. I took the screenshot today. But this is the, the beginning of the page. And um, is it coming through okay? Yeah, it's just small. Okay. And then here's... Because we're seeing... Yeah, we see your full screen, Susan. So we see it like the slideshow on the side and everything like that. Okay. All right. Well, well, so, you know, I don't want you to read it or anything like that. I want you to just kind of visually look and see that this is, this is um, what it looks like now. So it's, it's changed from a non scroller, you know, just something with seven citations to something now that has 37 citations. So this is a much more respectable Wikipedia page. And this is what we made live for uh, the media and the public to see so that whenever, um, the media started going, oh, my God, Fred Phelps is dying. You know, he may have only days to live. we got to get a story out there. It was big news. It really was all over the media. This is what they were able to find is something like this, some kind of really quality Wikipedia page that gave information to the public and gave information to the media. It's also more likely the media is going to... Um, find something like this and see that this guy not only is sane, but he's articulate. Um, he has a, you know, he has a really compelling story and they're more likely to interview him. They're more likely to um, uh, give him press. And when, of course, when you're giving him press, then you're giving our community, the atheist community, the skeptic community, Center for Inquiry, all that, and, um, and he was, he's also a huge supporter of gay rights. So all of that is on display just from this Wikipedia page. And if you, you know, later, whenever you guys have time, you might want to look over Nathan Phelps' Wikipedia page and see if um, you think it's, you know, what you think of it. So here's what happens. Let me scroll down here for a second. Um, so what happens is that we wrote that Wikipedia page in English, right? And then, as you do, we translated the page into into other languages, and um, uh, we we translated it into Dutch, and we also translated it into Russian. But what I want to show you is what the stats look like, and here's the Wikipedia stats for Fred Phelps. And if you can see, there's some big spikes in there. I think he was getting something like 50 page views a day. But whenever it was found out that he was in hospice, this is in March 16th, right around there, 2014, you can see the spikes are starting to get bigger and bigger, and then they kind of fade off. And, and then it was announced that he had died, and you see these huge spikes. This is 100 and, uh, what is that, 12,000 page views in one day. And that's twice. And then it starts going down to 3,000 page views a day as it, as it goes through the media cycle. So it's really important that Nathan's page is in great shape and also that Nathan is mentioned on the Wikipedia page for, for Fred. Here's Westboro Baptist Church. If somebody, people were doing a, um, a search for Westboro Baptist, they're going to see they're going to go and they're going to go to the Wikipedia page. And these are page views for the Wikipedia page for Westboro Baptist. Same thing. You have these spikes that hit 3,000 page views a day at its top. And then here is Nathan Phelps page views. This is um, not the same. You can see the same spikes, but not to the same extreme. I mean, this is only uh, 12, uh, 1,200 page views, 1,400 page views a day which is still a lot. So um, 
you can see now here's another slide I'm putting up. This is how many page views a Nathan Phelps page has been viewed since the GSOW project rewrote the page, which is 24,000, no, 245,319 times. So since we made this page live, rewritten, it's been viewed 245,000 times. So that's extreme outreach that we're giving to Nathan Phelps. And then here um, is a Wikipedia page in Dutch that we translated. And the Dutch page has already received 2,500 page views since we made it live. And then we also made it in Russian. Anybody want to take a guess how many uh, page views a Russian page on Nathan Phelps has received in the last couple of years? Someone guessed 5,000. 6,164. Give that person a, a prize. <laughs> <laughs> so how, six, how long has this been live for? This has been since alive we, since this page, the Russian page is. Um, the Russian and the Dutch. Say that again. The, the Russian and the Dutch. Okay, let me tell you. I will tell you. Oops. I have I have another screen you can't see. I have I call my my they call my office the war room because it's got so many computers in there. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Okay, so the Russian page. Oops. Okay, it's loading. So the Russian page has been in existence since January of 2016. So just over two years. And the Dutch page um, has existed since May of 2014. So the, and that was subsequent to uh, um, his father died. Exactly. Yeah, his so died. Uh, you're, you're making a very good point. So the pages didn't exist in Dutch and, and Russian when his father died. The reason, reason why we have a Dutch and a Russian page is because when Nathan spoke at the conference that I was at QED, he made such an impact on a couple of my editors, a Dutch editor and a Russian editor. They said, oh, I've got to go home and translate that because he's He's such an impassioned person. We just love him. But you're absolutely right. If those pages had existed at the time of Nathan, I mean, uh, Fred Phelps' death, then they probably would have seen a huge spike also, probably 10, 20,000 page views more, something like that over time. So, so it's important to have these pages done before we know that there's going to be something like that. But, you know, how are you going to know? So I'm going to tell you one more story. And this is about um, a, a Netflix film called What the Health. Anybody there seen or heard of this? Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in good company because um, a lot of people think like you. And I'm going to tell you a little story about this. So I had not heard of What the Health. It's a documentary on, on Netflix. or well, it was, I think, back in March. I think we're being really kind calling it a documentary. Um, I don't know if you guys would agree with me, but it's it's about veganism. Um, and there's nothing really wrong with veganism per se, but what this is, this is a this is a documentary that really is anti-science. I mean, they've got it. It's pretty bad. And um so I hadn't heard of What the Health, and I'm really active on Facebook. That's that's my place. I go there all the time. And um, so somebody on Facebook had said, Susan, what are you gonna? So somebody on Facebook asked me, what about this? Was there a question? I'm sorry. No. No. Okay. So somebody had said, Susan, what are you guys gonna do about What the Health? And I said, I don't have a clue what you guys are talking about. And they said, so I went and looked at it on Facebook, I mean, on Wikipedia. And here's the Wikipedia page that I found. And somebody had written this page. This is from July of 2017. So this is just a year, almost. And it it tells the story of, of it being a... Uh, 
how it was funded and who the director was. Also, it says featured individuals, and it has a whole list of people's names down here at the bottom. And the problem with it is, is that these the people who are listed as featured individuals, they they have um, after after their name it says like cardiologist or doctor or best selling author or physician or cr clinical researcher. So these people that are listed on the Wikipedia page look like they're very famous, notable people, but we don't know that these. These people don't have Wikipedia pages for the most part. They're mostly just people who are mentioned. If it's blue, then it will have um, a link to their Wikipedia page, and that means they're notable. But these are just, we don't know what these people's, um, um, you know, what their, I lost my train of thought. We don't know what their credentials are. So they could even be have been people on the film that were um, critics of the movie, but were listed on the Wikipedia page. So I felt that this was very misleading to have a Wikipedia page with a list of experts on it that don't have a disclaimer as to who these experts are. So in other words, this had to go, right? Because I felt like people are probably looking at this Wikipedia page. Here's what the citations look like. So it had seven citations whenever we found this Wikipedia page. No criticism. What the problem was is we did a bunch of Google searches and we couldn't find any criticism for what the hell. There was no criticism that we could find out there. So we can't cite a blog. We can't cite a website. So if somebody has written, you know, just some article about it saying, you know, this is bad science, unless that person themselves is notable, we can't use that citation. So, so it took a week or two and we found this guy. Have you guys ever heard of this guy? His name is Z-Dog MD. He's a real doctor. He has a YouTube channel and um, he is on, um, he has a channel. I think he's also been on a few TV shows. Does anybody know of him? I've seen him. I'm dying to meet him. So he's notable. He has his own Wikipedia page. So therefore, when he says something, it's something I can cite. We can cite this. So a couple of my editors got on it and they did what the health. And what they did is they 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 looked at this guy's uh, video that he had made. And down here it says, got a Facebook friend telling you to watch the Netflix documentary, What the Health? We wasted an hour and a half so you don't have to. That was what he put on the video. So we went through the video and we were able to add this to the Wikipedia page. That was the stupidest expletive thing I've ever seen. I feel like I've lost expletive brain cells. <laughs> So we're able to use that on the Wikipedia page for what the health, because he's notable and because he's a doctor, that's important. And also because it was put out in a public way that we could cite. So that made it criticism we could use. So I don't know, do you guys know who Harriet Hall is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we love Harriet Hall. She is a medical doctor, and um, she's also a friend of GSOW. <clears throat> We've had a lot of interactions with her. I've known her for years. And um, we asked Harriet if she would write a review for science-based medicine about what the health, because we knew that if she wrote it, it would be criticism. And we know that she's notable. She's notable because we wrote her Wikipedia page, and she has a wonderful Wikipedia page. And then we would be able to use this as a citation on what the health. So Harriet watched the film for me and she came back to me and she said, Susan, you owe me two hours of my life. That was horrible. So here, here's the article she wrote for science-based medicine that you could read later if you wanted to. But we were able to use it on the Wikipedia page. And it was, it was just in time. I don't know how well you can see these little blue lines, but these are the stats for what the health during the time that at the very bottom, you can see it's zero because it was just started. But where the red arrow is, that's where 
we got the criticism on there. So about 8,000 page views a day was happening at the time we got the, managing the criticism on there. It was getting three to 6,000 page views before that with no criticism, and that's a day. At its height, it hit 9,000 page views. So what's happening is people are seeing it pull up on their Netflix and then they're Googling it on face. They're Googling it and they're, they're getting a Wikipedia page and they're going to the Wikipedia page and they were getting nonsense for, for a few weeks until we could get some good criticism on there. And this is chart goes up until October of 2017. So you can see just in the time that from June to October of 2017, the Wikipedia page got 413,000 page views. That's a lot. So that's so the, my point is that I'm trying to make is that Wikipedia is extremely influential. And we have to have this because people are going to get information somewhere. And we need to make sure they're going to get information. And this is what we had uh, we put on the hair um, we put on the Wikipedia page from Harriet Hall. It says, what the health espouses the fairy tale that all major diseases can be prevented and cured by eliminating meat and dairy from the diet. It is biased and misleading and it's not a reliable source of scientific information. So this is what's on the Wikipedia page. She was much kinder than the other person was. So I'm going to tell you one last story. This is a very short story. Does anybody know who Stanley Plotkin is? I don't, heard the name. Okay. So don't be embarrassed. I hadn't heard of him either. I ha we have a very long list of things that need to be done, Wikipedia pages that need to be worked on. And Stanley Plotkin has been on our list for two or three years. If you know who Paul Offit is, he's um, a medical doctor. He works on vaccines. He recommended we, we look into Stanley Plotkin. And this is Stanley Plotkin's Wikipedia page right now because somebody rewrote it. Stanley Plotkin is a, a physician who has been instrumental in working on vaccines like rubella, you know, German measles, um, and also uh, uh, I think rabies and um, uh, another uh, another uh, pneumonia-like uh, vaccine. So this guy has probably saved lives all over the world. He's, he's been on the team that has been making these vaccines. So this is his Wikipedia page um, stats here. You can see there's 23 citations on there now. But this is the page it looked like until we rewrote it. Another non-scroller. It's five citations. That's pretty embarrassing. So this is a man who saved lives all over the world, and he's really had a crappy looking Wikipedia page to be honest about it. And it really is our fault because nobody can write these Wikipedia pages unless they care. And if you don't care to look or to think about how to do it, it's not going to get done. And um, so this is what it was. Now I'm going to show you one more thing and then I'm going to be done. We wrote to Stanley Plotkin and this is what he responded to me. He says, I'm flattered you undertook this, especially as I approach the end of my career and ask myself whether or not I have accomplished anything. So this is what's going on, is that people like Stanley Plotkin are getting forgotten. And he, feel, he feels forgotten. And I can't say that I blame him. So I'm going to... What I'm really looking forward to from you guys is, is um, Q&A. But uh, what I want to show, tell you is that, um, you know, we're always recruiting. And um, really. these aren't real Wikipedia. Yeah, isn't that great? Somebody made this slide for me. I thought that was great. So we're always recruiting people to join our GSOW project. If you decide you want to join, um, I would encourage you to check us out, actually watch one of my videos or something, or and read about us. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Um, but I want to answer all the questions you have. Oh, here's here's something I want to show you before I end, and this changes every, every day. So let me just pull up the most latest stats. 
So my project, GSOW has is responsible right now for six hundred and it's loading. Um uh, six hundred and hold on. 625 Wikipedia pages, something like that, that we have completely written or completely rewritten from, from scratch or from like Stanley Plotkin's page or Nathan Phelps' page. So those aren't all English. Some of them are in other languages as well. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get those, we're, we're following the stats, the page view stats, because we're trying to be measuring what we do. Because it's no good to do a project if you can't measure your results. And so we've been keeping track of all these pages over the time that we've been we've been doing this. We've just released, oh God, all kinds. And you know what? It's 640, 639 pages, because we keep adding them every almost every day. So of those 639 pages, everything's taking so long to load. We we're now at twenty seven million three hundred and fifty nine thousand six hundred and eighty two page views. So the work we've done has been been accessed at least twenty seven million times. The reason why I point that out is because people spend a lot of their time on Facebook and Twitter, or social media, arguing with people, saying they're going to try to change somebody's mind. They get into almost knockdown, drag down fights with people about um, about Wikipedia uh, about you know what they're doing right or what they're doing wrong I'm gonna end, I'm gonna stop sharing so you guys can see me again let's see if it stops so we get into a lot of fights with people about social media being right and people are always telling me well you know I'm arguing with that person because I want I want to change their mind and I'm telling them nobody's reading what you're putting up there. They're looking at the links that you're putting up. You're saying, oh, climate change or uh, GMOs or vaccines or whatever. They're not looking at what you're putting up. They're just trying to make their next argument. You're wasting your energy arguing with these people. And then they'll you tell me. You. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I'm saying oh, that, we lost you for a second. Oh, okay. So what I'm saying is is it was really it was amazing too what I just said too. I can't believe it. It was the most amazing thing that you can imagine no what I said. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to come back to the video later and watch it. But um, the video Right. Susan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Great. We're having some connection issues, Susan. Yes. So I'm going to try and turn our video off because that actually made it better the last time we were talking to someone because um, then it was just focused in on the audio for the Q&A, if that's okay. That's fine with me. Okay. How did I do that last time? Do you remember? I just uh, just the red one, the one. turn video off. Okay. Let's see if we can hear you better now. Okay. Well, let me put on a screen or something because we're still live. Mm -hmm. We're still live book, uh, uh, Facebook uh, living here, and I don't want to have mm. crappy looking. No, that's not helping. <laughs> well, it, so it's about bandwidth. It, it, because it's transmitting video and audio, yeah. it slows everything down. Because she turns her video off as well. Right? right, maybe if you turn your video off as sure. well. Just that little video camera button down in the very bottom, there's a circle, and if you click on it, it. Okay, how's that? Should be able to. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, we just yeah, heard that. better. Yeah, we'll try and see if that um, helps because I think we're just using up so much bandwidth with the video as well. Okay. Okay. I'm on Facebook Live still. Not that there's anything to see. <laughs> but I'm gonna, okay. Because it's uh, uh, here. Here's a picture of my office. There you go. So something people can actually look at. So it's not just <laughs> there you go. You're seeing my bookcase. Here. All right. So um, my point is that I was saying about uh, GSOW is that we're trying to get people to do something 
with their time so that they can so they can actually do something that supports science but so that it um is not something that you're arguing with people even the people on the fence who are watching what you're doing what you're trying what we're trying to tell you to do is to to uh come and work for us you know we're gonna people are going to these wikipedia pages and they're and that's where they're getting their information and not only just the average person but the media also because the media is being underfunded all over the world and uh it's harder and harder for them to do research because they don't have research teams like they used to whenever they had science writers so now they're going and turning to places like wikipedia to get their science and when it's pseudoscience they're getting crap unless somebody has been there to improve that wikipedia page You caught up? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> here we go. I'm ready for, I have all the answers for you here. Of course, I have them on my screen. <laughs> I, can't, I can't show them to you right now, so we'll just do audio. So ask me some good, hard questions. Okay. Okay, Susan, so the, what the health page, you're saying that there's a featured individuals and that you, you can't cite them because they're not notable. So what makes a person notable like can those people go make their own wikipedia pages like what's what's stopping me from making a smear public wikipedia page and being notable very good question um i should say that there are two different kinds of wikipedias there are wikipedia pages that because wikipedia has only been around since 2001 and for many years people were able to create wikipedia pages with very little oversight it's, you know psychics garage bands you know non not really notable pages. So there's a lot of Wikipedia pages that exist that should not exist at all. Nowadays, if you try to create a Wikipedia page, there are all sorts of different kinds of um, algorithms that will keep um, that, you know, when the page is made live, there are people who are overlooking it and they will see that page come up. And they'll see it and they'll say, oh, no, so-and-so's dog. I don't think so. Your mother-in-law, your second grade teacher, they delete over a thousand pages a day, may probably way over that. And I'm not talking about GSOW. We don't have anything to do with that. I'm talking about just general Wikipedia editors who are freaking amazing people. They are doing so much work. But to be notable... It's, it's a hard thing to kind of explain because what you have to do is you have to have secondary citations that prove you're notable by being written about in notable places by notable people. You have to prove that you are different. You're not just an author. You're not just a lawyer. You're not just a physician. You have to show some, they have to show some way that you are different from other scientists, other authors, other doctors. It's it's a difficult concept to kind of explain, but it isn't as easy as you think to make a Wikipedia page and, and make it live. To be notable, you really have to have um, your peers who are also notable recognize you in uh, notable ways. I, I, I'm just, I think that might be a little too vague, but I'm sorry. It is kind of a confusing topic to be able to explain. But you can't just make a page for yourself. It'll be deleted in minutes. Okay. Okay. Isn't the concept notable dangerously similar to appeal to authority? Well, yes and no. Um, if you're going to be... Let me think of how to phrase this. That's a good question. I haven't had it asked to me that way before. Let me think. So I don't look really stupid by answering you just off the fly. So appeal to authority is uh, um, maybe more like a promotional page. We have to be very careful when we write a page and we try to do it in a neutral way. There's another Canadian that we wrote a Wikipedia page for that was deleted. His name is um, James Fell. He's a um, nutritionist. Do you guys know who that is? He's from he's from Canada, and I and I worked on his page, and it became too promotional sounding, and so it ended up getting deleted. We're waiting to rewrite that again in, in a way that will be less promotional sounding. But having a Wikipedia page is absolutely an appeal to authority. 
um, and it can be used that way. So when Harriet Hall writes something for science-based medicine, I am going to turn around and use that article she wrote. She, it's, it's like a great power she has because Harriet Hall has a Wikipedia page. When she writes something, um, we can use it on a Wikipedia page. So it's, it is kind of a weapon in a way, and it has to be careful how you use it. So that's why there's many, many eyes on, on Wikipedia to make sure that people aren't abusing that. Uh, but Harriet Hall couldn't write about UFOs. You know, that's not her expertise. But if she's writing about medical things, then she is she's citable and we can use her. So, yes, in a way, it is an appeal to authority. And um, uh, you just have to be kind of careful how it works. Uh, again, that's kind of a vague answer. I'm not feeling comfortable with that. I, I feel like I should explain better, but I think I'll, I'll wait and see what other questions we get. I think, I think the alternative, though, is that if you don't cite sources that have um, distinction, then you're going to have just crap on there, and they're, they're going to appeal to authority as well. Exactly. Right? Right. So, right. so I, think, I think you want one way or the other, there's an appeal to authority, but at least you're getting, there's, a, there's something behind it, I guess. Right. So, so Wikipedia exists, so we have to take advantage of that. So uh, because Wikipedia exists as it is, we need to make sure that those pages are in great top-notch shape. So we've been given this tool, which I consider it a skeptic tool, because if you're following the rules of Wikipedia, then you're following good, good critical thinking um skepticism arguments you're you're using the scientific methods you're um, doing good critical thinking and so we really need to own this this is kind of like they handed us the perfect skeptic tool to re-educate people it's extremely time consuming obviously but um you know it's got to be done can, can i ask you a question oh of course that's uh, yeah so have you ever had uh, a Wikipedia page that you put up and then you found out that it that it wasn't accurate? And and, and I just wonder like is your process has your process been foolproof I guess so far in terms of making sure that the information that you're putting on Wikipedia has always been accurate? Or have there been times when uh, you know something I still do in practice or something? Well, the wonderful thing about Wikipedia is that Wikipedia it can be edited by anybody. So if something goes up and we find that it's incorrect, something that's wrong, it's, it can be fixed in seconds. We can take it down. We can reword it. We can uh, repair it. We can find a better citation. Um, we, we, we'll do that. Like, well, okay, for an example, this is a small thing, but one thing I remember doing is there was a there's an archaeologist skeptic. His name is Ken Feeder, and we rewrote his Wikipedia page. And by doing so, uh, we listed that he had two daughters, and because that's what the newspaper article said is that he had two daughters, and uh, we showed it to Ken Feeder and said, "Hey, check it out. We rewrote your Wikipedia page." And he says, "I don't have daughters. I have sons." I'm like, well, this newspaper article says you have daughters, so you have daughters. <laughs> and so what we, he says, well, I assure you they are boys, and they are very insulted that you're, um, um, you know, calling them girls. I said, okay, so what we had to do is we went into the Wikipedia page, and we had to make a note on the editing area saying, I know the Wikipedia uh, the newspaper article says daughters, but they're actually sons, according to Ken Feeder. And, you know, we had to change it like that. Um, that's a small little thing, but yeah, we see things all the time that we didn't word it right, or we, um, we, we kind of made it vague, or, you know, so those things happen, but it's not very often that we have really incorrect things because what we do is we try to, everything goes through the cabal. So when somebody's rewriting the Wikipedia page, what we'll do is before it's made live, we'll give it to the rest of the team and people reread it 
we like people to be in there who don't know the subject and they'll read it and they'll say, oh my gosh, you know, I, I have no idea what you're talking about here. This is so vague. I don't understand what you're saying. And it's good because we want them to read that and, and to explain that it's vague because we're trying to make this so that anybody can read this Wikipedia page and understand it. You don't have to have a, you don't have to have an expertise or anything like that. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have a question? I've seen many Wikipedia articles that is, I have notes on them like citation needed. Wouldn't it be better to call articles out for where they're making claims that they have no foundation? Um, like trying to revert back to the scientific, like where is the scientific research, where is the article? Um, because like you said, if it's just word, if one side's arguing from authority and the other side's arguing from authority, that really can just go in circles. That's a very good point. I don't think I've had that question before. So there is there is some discussion on this on the cabal about should we leave something in an article that is missing a citation um, in the hopes that maybe somebody will find the citation for it, or should we just delete it? And it's going to depend on the. Um, the article in question and, and what kind of citation. If so if somebody puts up that they, oh, I don't know, the psychic Sylvia Brown, um, I don't know if you remember her, but she, she claimed to have a master's degree in English. And something like that is not impossible, but it's kind of unlikely. And so it, it's not harming necessarily having that on her Wikipedia page if we put citation needed next to it. So it's going to depend on the topic. If it's a, if it's a, if it's something that's actually causing harm, the way it's worded, where people could, you know, maybe not take their medication because of it, or go to a homeopath, or go to a naturopath, or something like that, and it might cause some kind of harm, then we probably should remove it just take it out. Um, but sometimes we leave it in because we just want it to be like, uh, you know, it probably there's a citation for it. Somebody needs to find it. Um, some people spend their whole day editing. And all they do is they look for citation needed and they go and they try to find the citation and they fix it. Um, on every Wikipedia page, I don't know, I, I don't have a live screen anymore. How many people there have edited Wikipedia before? Are there anybody there? I can't, don't raise your hand because I can't see you. <laughs> There's three, three people, people, three people. How, what did you say? Half a dozen pages, he said, maybe less. Okay. So There's you, three people put their hands up. Okay, sounds, sounds great. Um, so um, on Wikipedia, on every Wikipedia page, on the upper left-hand corner, there's a little box called Talk. And you've probably never noticed that before. You don't have to have an account. You, can lo you don't have to be logged in. Anybody can read the Talk page of any Wikipedia page. And what that Talk page is, it's a discussion with all the editors who are interested in the Wikipedia page. They go through and they look at the talk page and um, if they have a concern or something they want to change that's large or they want to um, discuss it with somebody, like maybe taking the citation out or, you know, taking that claim out like you had said, then uh, they can discuss that on the talk page. And that's other editors talking to each other. That's where we let our hair down and get wild and loose, you know. <laughs> But um, so your question about removing the citation, it just depends on the page. But yes, we'd like to remove it if we can. Um, in most cases, we'll just remove it. What else you got for me? Yeah. Carol, I'm gonna I'm gonna point my camera out my window so people can look at my bird feeder. Maybe a bird will come along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you want? To start? Getting back to that documentary, what the hell? Yes. Um, 
but it's hard to it's hard to say whether the I haven't seen it. Uh, I'm afraid, but whether the information that it talks about it, whether it's legitimate or whether it's not legitimate, but how can you tell? Everybody seems to have a PhD in something or other. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. So we can't tell, and I can't I can't make my claim because it's not my it's not for me to decide. It's right. not for me to decide because I'm not an expert. And that's why we don't, editors aren't allowed to put their opinion in the Wikipedia page. So we have to turn to people like Harriet Hall or other medical doctors or people like that and get their, get their take. A lot of people that are in that video are probably medical doctors as well. So well, they can't. They can't prove that. That was what she was explaining. When yeah, there's the site like, just lists their name, but it doesn't tell you. There's no way to follow up on that. Was the point oh, that she was making? Okay. Yeah. Right. So I don't. I don't know, know if it, I don't know if this is your work, but I have seen people who I didn't think were terribly reputable on Wikipedia saying they have a PhD, and then somebody else goes through and says where the PhD is from, just to document that it's basically a diploma mill. Yeah. Right. So, you know, please, and somebody will say they have a PhD and somebody will put citation needed and turn up, you can look out where their PhD is from. <laughs> exactly. So the reason why you can't just put anybody's, uh, any anything on a Wikipedia page is the, the to put something on a Wikipedia page, it needs to come from a notable person or a nord or a notable place like New York Times, Washington Post, um, you know, uh, a notable journal like Skeptical Inquirer. If if the person has a reputation that they want to maintain, or if an organization has a reputation they want to maintain, that makes the citation notable enough to be used. So I can't use Joe's blog. I can't even use something like Breitbart. I can't use the Daily Mail because they ha don't have reputations of being notable, having journalistic integrity. So, so we can't use citations unless they're, unless they have some sort of oversight, some sort of journalistic integrity, some kind of reputation they're trying to maintain. So we can't, put um, um, just anybody's opinion on there. In fact, I can't put opinion on a Wikipedia page. Okay, wait, I should change that. I do have a Wikipedia page. So that makes me notable. So I, what I write can be used in other people's Wikipedia pages if I'm writing within my expertise. And my expertise is psychics. So if I'm, or the, my expertise is the, is the skeptic community. I can't write something on medicine or anything like that. So um, we have to rely on somebody like Harriet Hall or David Gorski or, or somebody who's an expert in that field. Have you ever, have any of uh, the GSAO people ever had um, edit wars with proponents of paranormal pages and back and forth? If that has ever happened and how does that get resolved? Right. So that's a good question. Edit wars are not as common as you would think. Um, what the Health did give us some problems for a while because we were live editing while it was a very hot topic. You know, it was in the media and people were very interested in the page. So you've got all kinds of people from all over the world who are trying to make changes on the page at the same time you are. And it's likely you're going to end up getting some kind of conflict. So um, that did happen with What the Health, but uh, we just stuck with it and we were able to, to keep it from being too much of a problem normally what we do is we the way i train my my people is i make them walk away if it's a real problem because we don't want to be involved in edit wars we don't it's a waste of time um the how, how do i say is it we don't this isn't the hill i want them to die on we have tons of pages that need to be worked on and if you've got somebody a 
that's uh, really, really cares about some a Wikipedia page and they're just sitting on the Wikipedia page, it, you could argue with them and spend your time like you would on social media, just arguing with them. Or you could walk away and go edit something else, come back in a week or so, and that person's probably gone away. And then you can make the edit that you wanted to. So we really don't have a lot of problems with it because I teach my editors not to be too, um, too uh, 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 concerned about this stuff. We don't, it's, it's not that important. So we don't have a lot. And, and there are other rules that are a little technical. I don't think you, you know, uh, if you're really interested, I can tell you, show you on, show you via uh, email or, or Facebook messenger, but it's, it's too confusing to, uh, to show all the words. I mean, all the um, training. What else? Suppose you had a, a notable person yes. who was notable. Maybe they've written a dozen books, but they're, uh, um, the person is a crackpot, right? right. Um, is, it acceptable, is it acceptable to have a Wikipedia article that's mostly criticism of this person's ideas? Oh, that's a good question. I like this one. If I have my screen open right now, I would be able to show you some uh, another some other um, a really good example of that. So just make note of this. There's a psychic out there right now. His name is Tyler Henry. He has a show on the E Network here in the United States called The Hollywood Medium. And um, yes, I like to have people that are cranks to have notable Wikipedia pages because as the criticism comes in, and that criticism needs to be secondary and it also needs to be notable, we want the criticism on the Wikipedia page so that people who are Googling that person's name will find a Wikipedia page full of criticism. And Tyler Henry is a very good example of it. There's a lot of psychics, actually, that have pages that are completely, um, probably three-fourths of it is criticism. And uh, we're fine with that. Uh, because we we want people to find that page because otherwise what's the alternative they're going to find positive wonderful glowing reviews about the person or their own website another one to look at is power balance do you remember the bracelets that people were really into you know they put it on it's supposed to make you more active and more balanced and uh, you know that kind of thing well there's there's a wikipedia page for power balance that's also a page that's full of criticism as long as it's notable criticism from notable places and notable people, it's okay. So yes, we have quite a few pages that we have written or I know exist out there. Sylvia Brown, the psychic, is another one I can think of. Um, Chip Coffee, who's another psychic. Um, what the Health, I mean, that's probably 50% 50, 50 um, criticism and 50% um, um, okay, Rupert Sheldrick had a meltdown last year. Rupert Sheldrick and Deepak Chopra had a meltdown a few years ago because we changed their Wikipedia pages to reflect that they're um, nonsense, that they're cranks. We didn't personally, GSOW didn't do it, but uh, Wikipedia editors at, as a whole did. They blamed my project and they blamed me, but that's fine. Um, another Brzezinski Clinic, which is a cancer cancer quack. His page is almost all criticism also. We want people to be able to, to go and Google Brzezinski Clinic if they're trying to find you know information about the quack, this guy, and we want them to find the Wikipedia page because if they, they'll find it well written um, with uh, citations and people can follow it and that way they can make up their mind about going to this cancer quack they're going to get there it's it's i called it the goldilocks effect so like let's say you 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 need to find out something and it's really important it's something you don't know anything about and you google it you're going to find critics and you're going to find positive things like their website and you want to find a middle ground something that's just right and that's what wikipedia exists for it's the middle ground it's not either extreme it should be neutrally written can i ask another question just sort of maybe a little bit of a follow-up to this so 
with with psychics and I mean uh, sort of pseudo um, I don't know, just that type of type of area. Um, it's not far down the line that you get into religion. And so, how do you approach religion when you're when you're doing psychics as well? Like, do you do you sort of throw them in the same category as psychics? And, I mean, it's all kind of the same, isn't it? Right. Or do you? <clears throat> okay, I wish I could see you guys and know who's telling you these great questions and actually know who you are. Um, you have to friend me on Facebook afterwards, okay? So, yes, I've been doing this for a lot of years, and I started out as an atheist, and then I got involved into the skeptic side of things. And I'm much, I'm much more interested in this in the skeptic thing because it's more the claims of the paranormal that I'm attracted to than, than the atheist side. I mean, there's no God. Okay, now what? We're done. Okay, woo. Um, I'm more interested in the, the claims. And so, but inside the the GSOW project, we have people who are very interested in so many different things. I have some of my editors that are just focused on religious things. Um, one of my editors, Leon, he's in the Netherlands. He's constantly writing pages about people who have left the uh, Muslim faith. And um, he writes about apostates and he writes about the history of religion. And he's so interested in it. That is his topic. He does a lot of that kind of stuff. So, so, um, yes, I have some people who write about Scientology. Um, you know, other people are more interested in the medical quacks. Uh, I have somebody who's really interested in cryptozoology. So, you know, we, we write about religious topics all the time. We also write, like, like with science, most science pages are in really good shape. But the people behind the science are not in really good shape. So we try to... So... People like Matt Dillahunty, uh, we wrote his page or rewrote his page. Um, Nathan Phelps, um, we did the page for Seth. Uh, what is his name? Seth Andrews. Seth Andrews. Yes, thank you. I forgot his name for a second. I'm sorry, Seth. We didn't forget you. Um, we've done a lot of Wikipedia pages. Oh, Ryan Bell, um, the guy yeah. who's who's uh, Year Without God. We've done a lot of pages for people who are atheists, outspoken atheists. Oh, read uh, Annie Lor Lori Gaylor, is that her name? Yes. Um, and her mother. Religion. Her and the mother and the daughter, we wrote both of those pages, I think. Or we, re we either wrote them or rewrote them, I can't remember. Um, and the reason is, is because going back to what I said about Nathan Phelps, is that the media is so... So uh, their hands are tied these days. They just don't have a lot of time and money to do a lot of research. So when a topic comes up, they need to find somebody quickly to talk to. And so if they do a Google of something, they need to be able to find a Wikipedia page of somebody that looks like, oh, this person's approachable. Oh, and they're, a sa and they're in the same time zone I'm in. So I probably could get a hold of them right now. And we can get them on the 5 o'clock news or something like that. And, and so we need them to have really well-written Wikipedia pages to also show that not only are they notable and um, their peers respect them and so on, we put up videos and audio of them so that people will be able to go, okay, the media will go, oh, let's contact this one. This is a good one. Let's call Harriet Hall. Let's call Matt Dillahunty. Let's call Seth Andrews. Let's call Stephen Novella. Because they are sane. They've got degrees. Look, they've done other lectures, they're articulate, they're in the same time zone that I'm in, and they're well-read, and, you know, they've written books, and so so that's another reason to be able to have these Wikipedia pages for human beings in great shape, so that the media will call on them whenever they're in need of meeting an expert. Because we, you know, they're going to call an expert, I'd rather they call one of our experts than calling some pseudoscience they uh crank that they found in the on a website somewhere or out of the phone book well if phone books even still exist these days <laughs> does that make sense yep 
We're shaking. Nodding heads. People can't realize we can't see you. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, when I first started sort of debating online on the internet, whenever you you know referenced Wikipedia, you were always slapped down. Like, well, that's not a good source. But is that because that was before pages used to be deleted? Like, is it more substantial now? Like, it's more reliable? That's a, this is Karen, right? Yeah, it okay. is. That's a great question, and we get this all the time. Wikipedia is not reliable, and you're absolutely right. Wikipedia itself is not reliable. I could sit and change right now a Wikipedia page for somebody and then tell you, here, cite it, and I could show it to you. And I could have put nonsense on there and you wouldn't know any different because you just read it and you go, oh, okay. So, you know, whatever. And, um, but it's a great place to start. And uh, if you follow the citations at the bottom of the page and do your own research, that's really what it's all about. So what we're trying to do is, um, you know, you know, Karen, here's how it is. If you, let's say you're at work and somebody at your work is kind of a little wooey, you know, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody's kind of got these odd beliefs and they come in with these odd things every so often. And maybe you're having some headaches and you're just not been feeling so good. And your little wooey friend comes over and says, Hey, Karen, you know, I've got this. Try this, try this. This is going to work really well for you. It's, it's homeopathy. And maybe you've never heard of homeopathy. Maybe you thought it, or if you've heard of it, but you thought it was some kind of natural something, you know, okay, it's some kind of natural thing. It's not going to hurt me. So you go home and you, and you say, you know what, this guy's kind of a crank a lot of the time. I'm going to, I'm going to Google that. And you Google homeopathy and you're going to end up at the Wikipedia page because that's just the way we are. Like I said, you've got the Goldilocks effects. You're not going to go to the most extreme page. You're going to go to the middle ground. You, you're more likely to go to a Wikipedia page on homeopathy and you're going to look it over. If even in the first couple paragraphs, you're going to go, oh, this guy is nuts. This is crazy stuff. And then you're going to go back to work the next day and you're going to say to him, you know, I did some research and I'm not so, I don't think this, this is going to get rid of my headaches. I, I'm not, I don't think so. You're not going to tell him I went to Wikipedia and read an article about it. You're going to say I did some research on the internet. Or I talked to some people or something. But we know damn well you're going to Wikipedia. And that's what most people are doing. So, yeah, depending on the argument you're in, you're not going to throw a Wikipedia thing to him and say, hey, according to Wikipedia, this. You would say, well, you know, I did some research and this is what I think. So it does still have a negative reaction. You guys got really <coughs> Are you still there? Because it's really quiet. Yeah, we did lose you for a second there. Oh, I thought I was just stunning with what I was saying. And you said, oh, that was just so amazing. I can't believe it. But my point was, is that, that you're going, people are going to go to Wikipedia. There's nothing we can do about it. So, oh, and you know, another good point is, is that a lot of people quote Wikipedia who are bloggers or people who are in the media um, and I wouldn't even doubt it because I didn't hear Tamara say anything about me, but Tamara, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you, in the introduction you gave about me, was any of it from my Wikipedia page? Um, that's what Karen had written on the, on our event page. Where'd you get that? Oh, no. So it's what you sent me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is off of my Wikipedia page. No, but my point is, is a lot of people. We went directly to the source. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's not what you're supposed to do. That's primary sources. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what we're supposed to, so so um, a lot of things that you hear, a lot of things that you read, the media is getting it from a Wikipedia page. And we found this many times like in obituaries. Somebody famous dies. You can see that, you know, if you look at the transcript of what the, what the media is saying, a lot of it is taken verbatim from a Wikipedia page. So even if you don't think you're reading Wikipedia, you may be reading Wikipedia. That's how that's how important it is. It's it's in the top ten of the most viewed websites in the world. I'm getting an echo. Hey, hey Susan. Hey. Um, so at at the start of your your um, your spiel or not spiel but your speech. Um, 
you had you had a photograph of people protesting on National Science Day, and um, and you felt that was really ineffective at the time, and you sort of walked away from it, maybe with a little bit of a bad taste. This this sounds great, like everything that you're doing, sort of behind the scenes and sort of dealing with the construct of of where people get their information is is excellent. Like, how are you finding? Is it moving? Do you feel like it's moving the scale down? The, I mean, there's so much. There's so much crap going on down in the States. Do you actually feel like it's moving the scale? Yes, please adopt us. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have your president, please? Oh, our our premier. premier. <laughs> we don't have a president. Yeah, whatever. We don't care. <laughs> Can we have your king? Uh, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> We have okay. just as much division politically up here. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Bye -bye. So he's, he's perhaps better, but Trump has set a pretty low bar. Yes. <laughs> today, today we voted. I don't know if you saw on my shirt. I have my I voted sticker on. Today we voted in our primaries today. So, okay. So let me clear this one thing up before uh, I see on Facebook Live somebody's making one of my really good editors, Rob Palmer, says that I better clear this up. Is that um, first is that Wikipedia is reliable according to Wikipedia, the link he just sent me, reliability of Wikipedia, circular reasoning. Thanks, Rob. That uh, Wikipedia is reliable according to a lot of a lot of anecdotal. Anecdotal, anecdotal evidence I have heard from the medical profession and the science profession, people who are experts on topics, they'll look at the Wikipedia pages for uh, science pages and so on, and they'll say, this is damn good, or pretty darn close. Um, I also, this uh, Britannica article came out that said that it's pretty accurate. So yes, reliable, it is fairly reliable. Okay, so going back to your question about... I'm getting an echo, so I'm hearing myself talk. Okay, so what was the question again? It was about how how do we feel about, was it the change of, um, since the March for Science, do we feel like there's been a shift or are you asking, do I feel like there's been a shift now that we've been working on these Wikipedia pages? I'm not sure I understood your question. So I stalled I, until I, 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 so I could think about it. I'm probably just asking more, to, just because of how, um, how much misinformation there is coming even from the white house and from you know from all all sort of authoritative sources at this point in time are you feeling like um and you know when it comes to when it comes to climate change and you know, scott pruitt and, like I, i'm just wondering do you do you feel uh, i i can understand absolutely sort of why you're doing it the way you're doing it and, I, and i'm just wondering You cut out on me. Can you hear me? That just and, and I think, wait, wait, wait. You cut out for you cut out for about thirty seconds there. I get. Are you seeing any results based on the work you're doing? Do you feel there are any results? Okay. So when we have twenty-seven million views. So we know that we must be having some kind of effect. Um, I can state um, we are aware of a few Wikipedia pages that have absolutely changed people's minds. Um, there is a um, an article I wrote about one man who was a passionate Mormon, absolutely missionary, over the top amazing Mormon and he heard about this idea of uh, what was the top Mormon's name? I'm getting him confused. Uh, Bingham Young or Brigham Young? Yeah. He, he heard of this idea that he had had multiple wives, polygamy. And he'd never heard that in inside of uh, the church before. It's just something he'd heard somewhere. He was listening to a podcast or something. And so he went to Wikipedia, did a Google search, and he found the Wikipedia page. Not only did he find that that uh, the leader of the Mormonism had had multiple wives, but he had them at multiple multiple wives at one time, 
he'd had wives of other people, other men's wives, and some of the wives were as young as 14. And there was a genealogical chart on the on the Wikipedia page that he was able to follow. And the guy's eyes were wide open. And he started doing research and he wrote this really amazing article using only Mormon um, citations. And he released this article out into the world. Uh, I can't remember what it's called at, at the moment, but um, um, he released this article out in the world. And this is, and this article that he wrote has been one of the biggest reasons for people to leave Mormonism. So we know that this guy got his information from Wikipedia. And um, it has been, it's caused, I don't know if it's hundreds of people or maybe a thousand people to leave Mormonism because of his writing. Um, I feel that we're having a difference because for one, one thing, I mean, what else can we do? I mean, we have to, it's an overwhelming topic. We're trying, we're attempting to change Wikipedia in all languages concerning science, scientific skepticism and the paranormal. I mean, we could go and argue on Twitter. Um, I could watch cat videos or I can actually sit down and do something about it. And this has been something that um, I, I'm able to do something. And my editors tell me that they are absolutely thrilled to be a part of the team. And they feel like they have more purpose now. They feel like they're making a difference. Um, and I know people, I know we are making a difference because we hear from people like Stanley Plotkin who tell us that they, how appreciated they are and uh, how, um, you know, how important it is to them, to what we're doing. We get thank yous constantly all the time from people. Um, we wrote a Wikipedia page for a man, um, a Congress person recently, who's also a climate change supporter. And he's retiring now. And he told us, he said, you guys have done so much research on me. Now that I'm going to sit down and write my autobiography, I'm going to probably just use a lot of the citations, you guys, all the work you've done. And I'll be able to use it as a guide to write my autobiography because of all the work you've done already. It's it's so organized and, um, you know, thorough. We do a lot of wicked, a lot of my people who are editors love astronomy. And uh, so they just focus on pages of astronomers and the that field and that's they're passionate about it they love it it's it's a hobby for them to be able to do you know to read about astronomy and and so they're making changes the way we think about it is there there's probably middle school and high school students all over the world right now who are plagiarizing the work we're doing for the reports and we're fine with that because you know we feel like they're getting good good information now it's like i say it's a great place to start and they could go and they could find the citations we leave for them, like little breadcrumbs. And hopefully those breadcrumbs are going to lead them into wanting to go into science themselves. Because we want to inspire more, more people to go into science. We want the Wikipedia pages written in a way that they don't look like the person just, you know, spraying out of the loins of those mother as with a PhD. We want to show that these people are real people with real struggles in life and you know, that they were inspired to go into science because their second grade teacher was really awesome. You know, whatever we have, to, whatever their story is, we want to tell it, but we have to tell it in a way that's not gossipy or promotional, but factual. You know, we try to write it so that it's readable and interesting. Uh, I think, I think you, uh, I think it's an excellent avenue to, uh, that you, that you sort of found to get information on property. So. Well, it seems to be better than our doing on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. We've only got time really for, well, we probably should be wrapping up because we only have the room for a couple more minutes, but Randy, did you have? I'm just wondering, it seems like everything that you're, you're doing is involved, involved in the platform of Wikipedia. It seems that they're chronically short of money and, and is to allow the power to force shut down and then there's always appeals for money. So well, do you have any contingency plans for what your organization or do you Wikipedia actually enter a business because they couldn't fund themselves anymore? Did you hear that, Susan? It was a little garbled. I think he was asking me about a contingency plan. Right. So Wikipedia, quite often you get the 
little requests for money from them once in a while. He's just wondering what would happen to your organization if Wikipedia suddenly disappeared. Well, somebody's putting all, somebody's printed it out. It's in a museum somewhere. Um, <laughs> so it exists. I think they're also putting it on silver disc and they're flying it to the moon or something like that. I've, I've been told that. Um, I don't work for Wikipedia. I should be clear. I work for, uh, I'm a volunteer and all my editors are volunteers. We do have a nonprofit. If you guys are, if you guys want to donate money, please donate to my uh, website, which is called About Time, which allows me to go to places and do um, live, live um, interviews and, and lectures. So uh, please look us up on About Time. That's our website, just like it sounds. About Time. Uh, we. We um, can only do what we can do. I don't think Wikipedia is going anywhere anytime soon. And I want to just say to round up that I really appreciate you guys doing this. I know it's kind of been weird on my end, especially because I'm getting an echo. I don't know what it's like on your end. And I wish I could see you. I want to, like, I'm trying to hear your voices being a little different, but I, I'm not, I'm not there. But um, please friend me on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to put out this video. It's going to be pictures of my um, bird feeder, I think, with birds flying around. So it should be interesting as, <laughs> as you watch this. But um, if you're interested in joining our project, we ask not to join today, like in the next 30 seconds, because I don't want to be, it's a commitment. It takes months to train with us. Um, we really would like to have you join, but I don't want you to join just because I've sold you on it. I want you to think about it and make sure this is something you want to do. And if you do um, want to join, please send me a Facebook friend request and send me a private message over Facebook Messenger because I love Facebook Messenger. And then we'll get your training materials to you. You also have to open up a Wikipedia, a Wikipedia account and I need your email. And, um, you know, even if you don't join, hopefully you guys have learned something about Wikipedia and what's going on. Um, we do a lot of activism. I'm also a uh, write for Skeptical Inquirer magazine, and especially online. And I do um, um, I lecture all over the world, and I do a lot of can uh, promotions for skepticism. I'm trying to get the community back together. Trying to trying to, trying to trying to shift our focus a little bit and get us back to being more. I want us to be more of an activist type of um, organization. I'm active with a lot of things to do with um, psychics and I've taken on facilitated communication and we're working on that right now too. And you can find all that out probably from my website or just following me on Facebook. I tried to search for your website and didn't have it come up. It's hard to find Susan. I tried, I heard it on a podcast you're talking about and I tried to find it after it. It's, it's difficult to find. So what's the exact web address? Do you know? Yeah, let me get it real quick. It's um, one of the things when people are joining the project is um, I don't tell them about um, how to get a hold of me very easily because we want people who are good at doing research. <laughs> So it's called abouttimeproject.wordpress.com. You can also put in about time Gerbic. That should pull it up. I tried that. No, it didn't work. Oh my I did find it eventually, but it was difficult. How interesting. Yeah, so we've only had it for a few months because we just became a nonprofit just in the last few months. The James Randi Educational Foundation gave me uh, money and said, we love what you're doing they only give one award a year and they gave it to us and then and then at the same time center for inquiry made me a, a fellow so the two most prestigious organizations have recognized us as doing a damn good job and you guys just disappeared again where'd they go <laughs> You just, oh yeah we're like where did you go where did you go I'm, I think that's cute. I'm here with my cat and my um, birds flying around my cats want to get to the birds i hope to be able to come and talk to you guys someday i um, i'm going to be in vancouver which is not that close to you but i'm doing a, a tour of the west coast here coming up in a few a uh, few weeks and i tour a lot i'm, I'm trying to do you know, a lot of lectures because I'm retired now and I can. So I really want to get out and talk to you guys in person. 
Uh, and um, if you can, if you if you if you want to, you can bug me about it, and maybe I can come out and see, go to Calvary, and go and go see you guys too. And come to Cyclone. Seriously, you guys. Anybody coming to Cyclone I'm this here. year? Tamara, is that you? Thank you, about. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, you have got to go sell a kidney or whatever you got to do. Get your ass to Psycon. I mean, my goodness, <laughs> it is so freaking much fun. We're gonna have a pajama party and everything this year. We've got we've got Stephen Fry and Stephen Pinker and James Randy. Hopefully, Dawkins gonna be there again. Ah, who cares? <laughs> God's still bad. <laughs> you know what? You go to the you go to the conference to see him dress up for Halloween. He's hilarious. He dresses up as a what is a butterfly catcher? Yeah. And he goes around and chases people with his butterfly net. Oh my god, the video. Jeez. You gotta go just to see that. You can't just get this from a lecture or watching on YouTube. You gotta go. And I have some pictures of Tamara too. I'm gonna I've joined your group. <laughs> hey, send me no, send me a link to your send me a link to your Facebook group. I'm gonna put up some pictures of Tamara of uh, some activism she did because I don't think you guys have seen this yet. So somebody please send me a link to your Facebook group, the atheist group of. I thought I thought it was Greater Edmonton Skeptic Society, so I need to change that. So please send me a link. <laughs> If they're not safe for work, by all means, thank you. Oh, <laughs> you'll, yeah, yeah she's, I know exactly, Tamara has been, Tamara, I've known for years. I'm not going to show the hot tub pictures, though, Tamara, okay? <laughs> oh, dear, now we're Not those, I won't share those. Yeah, we're going to get kicked out of the building in oh. a minute, so I'm going to have to say thank you and goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you. Give me a few minutes of your time and uh, contact me on Facebook. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank bye. you. Ciao. Bye. bye. I'm coming to live in Canada. Right. Somebody get me at home.